Hi and welcome. So this time around we have a lens project. I actually have several lens projects coming up that are going to be kind of interesting. Kind of delaying one of my big projects I'm working on. But you know that's the nature of the biz. You got to take what comes. I um, want to thank Joe over Sierra Specialty, Specialty Auto for sending me some stickers. I uh, appreciate that. I'll add a couple to my board up there. And uh, I always appreciate stickers and I'll send him some as well. Um, the project this week is to work on a lens. Uh, it, specifically to make a tool to remove the inner nut that holds this lens group together. Uh, it's a specialty spanner. The, the width and depth of this notch is about 40 thousandths by something like 60 thousandths. Uh, pretty tiny. So what I plan on doing is making a double pillar style uh, spanner wrench that's adjustable. So you have two pillars and you have a couple crossbars that go through those pillars that you can tighten down the top bar to adjust the spacing width. And the bottom you'll have pins that uh, uh, have the slots or whatever, they'll be replaceable pins. So they'll be whatever you need to do for the specific part you're interested in taking apart. So uh, we're gonna make that and uh, we're just gonna move on. And <laughs> this is one of those projects where I didn't do a drawing first, but I kind of got all the idea of what I want to do in my head uh, ahead of time. And I'll probably jot some uh, measurements down on paper as I go in case I need to come back to them. So let's get started. All right. so. I've got uh, two pieces that I need to get to length still of this A2. Uh, that's what I have around to for this. Um, I mean, ultimately, it probably makes sense to harden it, but I don't think I'm going to right now. Um, I'm just uh, facing these off and then going to chamfer them both. And then I've got a drill and tap for quarter 20 on the end here. Um, the first crossbar will be down about an three quarters of an inch or so and uh, the second one like an inch under that and uh, we'll go from there drilling the uh, number seven tap drill hole next up just tapping got to go in quite a ways about three quarters of an inch. Now the second side, I'm just facing them off to length. And then I'm going to drill and ream for quarter inch because what will go in the end here is quarter inch pins. I'm going to use a screw machine drill because it's stiffer. You know, it's short length, you see that. And use the DRO on my tail stock. I'm going to go in about a quarter, I mean three quarters. This is a carbide tip reamer. And for the test pit fit, I can use various size pins in here as well. Um, this one's probably an inch and a half, somewhere like that. Um, so if I need it closer up for more support, I can do that. Um, just any pin I want. The nice thing about these is I can buy hardened pins and then cut them to size uh, later. So that'll work out great. We are going to have to put some flats in the pins so we can get some registration. All right, the first step here is I'm going to take both of these guys and I'm going to put flats on all four sides of them. I'm going to go 50 thousandths in. Uh, the point of that is pretty much just to make reference surfaces so I can come back to them. And it'll look nice too. So it's an added bonus. Alrighty, so the first side's done on both, and uh, thinking more about this, I only need uh, two sides with the flats, and that'll help me. Actually, one would be enough, but for symmetry, I'm going to do two, and that's going to be the side that the uh, the eighth inch bars go through. Um, so that'll be no problem because I'll just align that with uh, parallel on the bottom, drill straight through. Um, so also, I need a set screw to hold the uh, the whatever you want to call it, the little pin that's going to stick on the end end. And I want as much meat as possible since this isn't very thick to begin with. All right, so I've got uh, parallels under each side of this, um, but not anything in the middle. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to first spot drill, and then I am going to drill and ream for 3 16ths for my two shafts. These are the uh, cross shafts here. 
Uh, they're 12 L14 steel. That's what I was able to get in high tolerance steel. And uh, um, we're going to make sure the fit is nice and smooth and reasonably tight because that'll prevent any racking or as much racking from occurring. I'm only doing one set of lockdowns on it, which is pretty standard. Um, but there is a possibility that won't be adequate, and we'll find out uh, when we go a little bit further. And when I do that, when I'm done with this on both of these, then I'm going to roll it 90. I'm going to drill and tap on the other side for uh, these 440 set screws I've got here. And th their job is just to hold the pin in place, and that's something that won't change all the time. So the fact that that uses an Allen wrench isn't a big deal. By the way, I don't know if you noticed this work stop. This is one I made when I was in school, spring-loaded in the middle. Pretty nice. Uh, one of the first projects I ever did. And to be honest, uh, one I don't use too often, but it does reach a little bit farther into the vice jaws, which is handy because I wasn't actually catching the work. So uh, it's pretty handy to have. I made an unfortunate discovery drilling the hole and tapping the hole through this side first, but not drilling the hole past this other hole uh, is causing it, it reach, just reaches the end of it and it's causing the bit to deflect. So I'm switching to an end mill, uh, which will do sort of the equivalent of drilling and reaming at one time. Still have to go really slowly. Second hole, it's going to be two inches away from the first hole. I've already got it spotted. Because of the hole placement in the end here, I got deflection, which meant uh, this is not a great hole because I got bit deflection going through there. The one I drill and ream by itself, look at that fit. It's really, really smooth. What a fit. Anyways, I think the fact that I've got the lockdowns on this side, it's going to compensate for it, but I'm definitely not happy with it. So now I've got to rotate this 90 degrees and then drill and tap for my 440 set screws. So I uh, broke the drill bit just as it was breaking through the burr that you hit just at the end on the inside, uh, you know, on the other side of a cut. It caught the drill bit and it broke it off. Then I used a scribe to pry that out and uh, that broke <laughs> in the hole. And uh, fortunately, I bought a bunch of these used uh, but really good shape uh, carbide, small carbide end mills. And they're all still really sharp, which is nice. Got them on eBay for a good deal. Was able to drill it out, and then I could tap it, and we'll be good to go. Just so you know, in tapping this, I am using a tap follower. This is a pretty delicate uh, tap. This way it'll be vertical. All right, so I've got the hardened pins in a in a ER collet holder that's square, because what I want to do is put flats on two sides of it for registration. I'm only going in 25 thousandths. I'd show you the cuts. Uh, this is a hardened, this is a carbide bit with seven flutes designed for cutting hardened materials, uh, but it still makes hell of a lot of noise. So I'll skip uh, making you suffer through it. I've done the first side. Now I'm going to flip it 180. We're going to do it again, and then I'm going to do the other part. Here's the clamping side of the two parts. And uh, then I'm going to grind, or attempt to grind in, the features in this end. Uh, 40 thousandths deep, 40 thousandths wide slot. See if we can pull it off. All right, I'm here on the surface grinder. And I don't really have a good way to show you uh, the surface grinder because I have no easy way to get the camera over here. But what I'm doing is I've already mill ground the rear part of this uh, slot. Now I'm going to grind this side, and I'm coming from the top down. So first I made them flat, and then I'm going down. 45 thousandths, 
And I'm gonna leave it 40 thousandths wide, actually just a tiny bit under so that it'll fit in there pretty easily. Can't do this while holding the camera in one hand. And I know there's a ton of stick out. If this were a precision operation, I'd never hold two parts, even though they're both ground to be the same diameter. Um, but I would never do that. And there's a ton of stick out, which also could affect the accuracy if that's what you're shooting for. But I'm just trying to get accurate slots and uh, that's actually not a problem. And they don't have to be super accurate any more than a screwdriver does. Um, so there's just an easy way to deal with really hard material. Could have done this on the milling machine, but I thought this would be an interesting experiment. And there's the slots. Hopefully those will be the right size. I will measure them with the mic. Alrighty, so here's the assembly. A um, couple caveats. I've only got these screws right now because the set screws I ordered, UPS hasn't delivered yet. So uh, let's just assemble these guys real quick. So the lockdown screws go in the ends and they will be tight when they're almost all the way in. I mean, I had extra bar length, so I figured what the heck. I might as well uh, use as much of the bar as possible. So the disappointment was the fact that this hole here ended just inside of where I was going to place this one. And so the drill bit followed and it made oval holes, which really is annoying. Uh, the bottom one is nice and tight. Uh, fortunately, it does not hamper the functionality of this thing. So I'm just going to pop these guys somewhat close together, tighten them down for now. Here are the uh, two driver tips I made for it. And the flats will automatically force them to line up appropriately. And like I said, until I get the set screws, I'm going to have to live with these really big and ugly Allens here. And uh, yeah, so the flats are directly in line with these. So I'm just gonna tighten these guys down. Fortunately, this is all a test lens. It's just an experiment. So fortunately, we're not uh, we're not in a lot of money on it. So I just pull these guys out until they lock in, making sure not to touch the glass. That would be bad. All right, I got the width set right. Now, one of the reasons he wanted this tool is because this outer part it had been dropped and it had been bent you can see there a bit so this being soft aluminum it probably flexed in a kind of an ugly way so it's entirely possible this will not untighten easily oh, there we go I got it I got it to move a little bit it is very tight though well at least this hardened pins I was concerned about the pin just breaking off. It's at least not doing that. Oh, it's gonna, if I get this off of here, it's gonna be very difficult to put back. Well, I was able to get it till it gets close to the top here and then it's all so gummed up, it's hard to get it done. You can see now that there's a, a big gap all the way around it. Um, so I was able to get it out to here, but I'm having a hell of a time where it's all bent up over here because now it's really starting to bind. So the client recommended popping this guy in the lathe. Um, I put some uh, Scott 3M tape on the back to protect the ferrule that slides in and out of the alignment uh, and just snugged it ever so uh, gently. Um, but first of all, this top section threads into the bottom section. That's how uh, it sets back focus. And uh, um, so, it unloosens in this direction, so I would have to come from the back, which isn't a problem, run the lathe in reverse. Uh, but the other problem is that even after it's all the way tight in one direction, 
there's another part where this is loose and I think this would be a disaster if I tried to turn it on the lathe. So we're going to have to look for another solution to get this nut off. Alrighty, I found a set screw back here that tightened this whole thing up. It still wiggles a little bit. Um, I think this is a terrible idea, but the owner was interested in trying anyways since the lens is trash. So I'm going to give it a shot. I'm going to try and take like a thousandth off at a time um, because this nothing here was designed for the pressure involved in cutting. Um, so I'm just going to give it a shot and see what happens. I'm using a positive rate cutter. Yeah, started wobbling even more, which made the cut more extreme. Alrighty, so I did, I have this whole time unloosened, I don't know if I even mentioned, uh, the set screw holding the threads in the outer part, but taking off the damaged part uh, actually did help, and uh, I am able to loosen this now. It's still really tight because it's uh, not straight, but uh, it is coming off. I pre-loosened part of it off camera because it's a struggle and I didn't know if you'd want to watch the whole thing, but uh, my concern is going to be going to get the, getting these threads back in. I think that's going to be a bit challenging, but we did get uh, the threads off, uh, the threaded nut off, so that's kind of exciting. Um, hopefully the customer will be interested and uh, he can continue to experiment with this lens. So there we go. It's off. I really do need to deburr this. Um, we'll try and figure out how to do that without damaging anything else. But the front lens element is now free and he can get to the inside part. So this problem is done. Um, like I said, I've got to deburr this for him and uh, hopefully we'll be good to go. Thanks for watching. Hope you find it useful. Hope to see you next time.